Catherine, the new XP is in the Rule 20 channel, uh, 5245. By the way, you were really useful yesterday, or, uh, last week. Yeah, you won Actually, you really were. Poetry competition. Um, I, I did write some bad poetry. Yes. Just. All right, well, let me do my summary, and then you can share your poetry. You have to share. If you scroll up. If, if yeah, you scroll you up in the D&D channel in Discord, you can see ours. Okay, I'll have to do yeah. that. I'm yeah. there's a, still like, no! There's an AI-generated rap song, which is freaking awesome. Carissa, did you put yours in Discord as well? I did not. Because you have yours written. You took wrote down I did. Else. I wrote one. I might have put it in the D&D channel. Yep. All right, so... Last time we got together, the party finished searching the Vibig cave, um, found a war mage wand and a pearl of power, fixed a broken wagon, and brought the mead back to town. In town, they discovered that the townspeople had decided to hold a vigil to try to convince Oral to ease up some. Um, and with the return of their mead, it turned into a little bit of a party, and one of the townspeople decided to sponsor a poetry competition. And uh, the poetry competition, um, there were lots of poetries. Some of the poems included uh, Ease Off or We'll Kill You, <laughs> which was beautiful. Um, and the poetry slam was almost immediately crashed by bears. And then a strange sort of um, icy centipede creature that was that that had boiling hot blood that the party uh handled it's like don't hit it yeah yeah don't don't hit it because it explodes fiery blood at you the party handled that fairly uh fairly well um but yeah uh okarist rolled a natural 20 on her performance and so she performed a poem which we didn't have at the time because Catherine wasn't available. Uh, do you do you want to recite said poem? It's very short, but yes. Oh. Give me a second. Oh. Before we do that, let's, let's do intros. I'm Phil. Uh, I've been GMing for about two years now. And uh, we're doing Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Um, I don't know if we need them either. It just makes sense to me. Steve? I'm Steve. I play uh, Dripper. He is a Kenku Arcane Trickster Rogue. Uh, Trish? I remember to push my button this time. I'm Trish. I play Aramanthia. I am a Dragonborn Monk who is half-sister to Heels. Okay. Um... Sorry, I'm just adjusting the other thing on the fly here. Uh, Spencer. I'm Spencer. I play a Yonti Paladin, uh, Oath of the Ancients, trying to preserve that light. And the cat is trying to get over the blinds. <laughs> Catherine. Um, I am Catherine. I play Ocarist, a uh, tone-deaf sorcerer with no sense of rhythm who thinks they're a bard. And last but not least, Carissa and her snacks. Hi, I'm Carissa, and I play Hyalzebub, who is a healing warlock healer um, with interesting parentage. And yeah, I'm the half-brother of Tia. Today's snacks are brought to you by uh, Brookside Dark Chocolate, Apple Chips, and I thought I'd change it up today and have some real potato chips from Simple Check. Thanks. What's a Simple Check? They're yellow and there's like three ingredients. Oh, okay. Uh, and those. Hmm. Again. We are not sponsored by any of these, but wouldn't mind being sponsored. Correct. All right. Nobody gives us free stuff. 
so you guys um, have finished the uh, the vigil in Goodmead, at which uh, Oakrist's poem won the competition. Uh, and you remember it going something like this. In the winter of our discontent, <laughs> blackness shrouds the continent. Fair oral, show your might. Turn the dark clouds into the light. It's cold. Our fingers and our toes are blue. But our hearts would birth, burst with joy if the sky was, too. Oh, blessed oral, saint and seer, remove the endless darkness here. Yep, that's a nat 20. Yeah, that was good. Uh, does it get me more points if I admit that I wrote this in the middle of the week at about 2 a.m. when I was baked out of my mind? <laughs> I will give you an extra golf clap. Yep. I liked I liked discontent and continent. That was that was a highlight. Was a I, I was laughing really hard as I was doing it. <laughs> I scared the There's some about writing terrible poetry that's just fun. It puts you in a ten towns frame of mind. What was it? Oh mine? Yeah. Yes. Mine? Uh Icewind Dale State Icewind of Mind. Dale State of Mind. Yeah. All right. Um so you guys had, uh, had decided to head this direction. Um, you see on the map, I've added Dugan's Hole, which is where you guys were headed to next. <clears throat> As you wake up the next day after a long rest, um, having, having saved the town a couple times over, what would you like to do? Where are we again right now? Good meat. We just had a long rest. At the end? And Dugan's oh. Hole is where we're heading, right? Like, yes. um, look, I can't, I can't remember where we. Uh... But we were in Goodmead, weren't we? Yeah, we're in Good. Yeah, we're in Goodmead. Why were we going to Dugan's Hole again? Uh, you guys were completing your tour of Ten Towns, and um, you had heard they were having some trouble in Dugan's Hole. Yeah, there's. Uh... No one has heard from them in a while. Yeah. Right, right, okay, now I remember. There is something about them. Um, Dripper, you're also feeling um, like heading in that direction is a good idea. Okay. You're not sure why. Okay, I tell everybody I want to go there. I'm just like, uh, I want to go to Duggan's Hole. Let's go, let's get moving. Let's go. Let's see why things aren't going well. All right. Oh, we're by Red Waters. Can we throw that thing in? You already did. I think oh, we already good. did. Good, good. We've done all three of those. Yep. Don't know what happened with it, but we've dropped the crystals in Merdualden, Red Waters, and Lake Dinners here. Don't we have to go back to that uh, to the place with the sundial or something like well, that? A place of power. You guys, uh, we, it, we already did that in Lonely Wood. Too. Yeah. Okay, so whatever we need, to, that's done too. Yeah. Yeah. All of Joseph's requests are taken care of. Right. Joseph going to give us something if we uh, if we did all this? Uh, he gave you. The, we will find out. He gave you the. Um, Alchemy jug. Yep. Right, 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 right. I swear to God, I've been paying attention. <laughs> hey, this is a lot of stuff to hold in one person's head, and I have like an entire giant book and electronic copies of it. So don't worry about it. Uh, all right. So the trip to Dugan's Hold takes uh, about four hours on foot. Um, and as you guys are headed out, uh, I would like someone to roll me a uh, D100. Uh, okay. 
Okay. That, that just confirms it. All right. So you guys get about halfway there and a tremendous blizzard starts blowing in. Are you going to continue traveling through the snow or are you going to hole up and wait till it blows over? How well, close are we? Are we like a quarter, halfway. half? You're about halfway. Yeah. Okay. Most of the storms we've run into have been about eight hours when we've waited them out, you guys. So we we do out? not have a hut. We are all we haven't recharged the bead yet. Although there is a little bit of tree forestish area not too far off the road. You could always try to build some type of lean to. Yeah. What do you guys think? I think we should hunker down and wait it out. Sounds good, bro. Okay. I'll go into the forest and start gathering twigs and branches to build a lean to. All right. Roll me a survival check to see how well you build a lean to. I'll help. No, oh, okay. Roll one more time. Beautiful. All right. It's not comfortable. You definitely miss the dome, but you managed to build some type of shelter that keeps most of the wind and snow off. Um, like most times while you are uh, in the blizzard, you do hear very loud noises. Um, you're not sure if they're near or far due to the dampening nature of the snow. Um, you guys are hunkering down in your shelter and just chilling. Weathering the storm. Okay. I asked Okaris for a fire. Oof. There is fire. It's beautiful. There's also apparently a cat. Very much so. Uh, Gearvor has become a lap cat. She's become a I will annoy you until you do what I want cat. That seems to be the way. That seems could you it, not? This is the way. <laughs> Dang, I can't wait for the next season of that. As I just said it, I'm thinking I'm going to go rewatch it. It was good. Bad Batch starts this week, actually. I don't know if you guys watch the Star Wars cartoons or whatever, and, and if you haven't, you should, because they're really, really good. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, Bad Batch. On Disney Plus? Yes. Yep, starts uh, May the 4th. Uh, the first episode is 75 minutes, and all of the rest are uh, 30 minutes or so. And they really, 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 really flesh out canon for, for uh, Star Wars. So, like, uh, uh, what is it? Star Wars Rebels and uh, Clone Wars. Would you say they released that? May on the 4th. Star Wars Day. May the 4th. Be with you. On Star May the fourth be with you, and then you have Revenge of the Fifth. Yep. So we're we're hunkered down in this hut. Uh, do we do we need to take watches? Um, that would mean that you'd have to stick your head outside of the hut to kind of watch and see what's going on. I uh, I'm picturing you guys sort of huddled in the blizzard. Um, the blizzard lasts. I need to roll some dice. About four hours before it calms down. Um, was anybody peeking out, or were you guys all huddled down? It makes sense that... I was huddled down. Somebody would stay awake. If you hear a growl, you, know, you wake everybody up. It, it sounds too dangerous for everyone to go to sleep all at once. Yeah. So you guys take turns napping. Um, and you, you do hear... Um, um, you do hear loud, sort of rhythmic thumping noises, which reminds you that you've you've heard rumors that um, with the blizzards in Icewind Dale come 
uh, there, there's apparently an ancient white dragon that um, hunts using the blizzards. <coughs> but you have an uneventful four hours, and um, the rest of your travel takes you to a, a full day's travel. You end up with uh, eight hours as you approach... Dugan's Hole. Dugan's Hole is the smallest community that you've seen so far. Um, on the outskirts of the town, as you approach, you see this weird sort of set of standing stones. Um, they don't they don't appear to be there's there's no real development around them other than like some snow has blown up next to them. Um, yeah, the 20 stones of That looks like it's on the other side of the city. Oh. They're pretty big, though, so you can see them. Okay. Uh, the town okay. itself is quite small. Uh, it has two small docks that are sticking out into the river. Um, the ice has covered um, the, the, the water around them entirely, so the docks are kind of useless. One of them you see is actually broken. Uh, the ice has heaved and, and shattered a portion of the dock. And... As you... Uh, as you enter, you, you notice that um, a lot of the residents that are all sort of bundled up in... Um, in uh, heavy winter gear are all of a really similar height. And what features that you can see are um, sort of startlingly uh, similar to each other. Similar shaped noses and eyes and ears. As you are, um, as you're entering Dugan's Hole, you overhear people talking to each other. Um, and you see a uh, local with small misshapen ears who's talking to a friend, and he says, I don't know how many, but them wolves are as big as a horse. And the one he's talking to says, they know words. Got a mighty vocabulary. Um, and uh, as you're continuing to walk through town, uh, you hear somebody else mention that um, there are two people missing. Sill and Finn. Apparently they were captured by these wolves at oh. Thrun's Stones. What? what? They got kidnapped? By wolves. That talk. By talking wolves. Yep. Um, and the uh, uh, another one who looks uh, female but shares similar features. Um, misshapen ears. Um, they all have sort of pointy-ish teeth as well. Um, Why couldn't they have been snakes? They're not. Because they would die. <laughs> it's too cold here. Um, okay, so who who got kidnapped? Sorry. Finn and Syl. A brother and sister. Is anybody else hearing the faint, sen faint tune of banjos in the air? That's what I wanted to call <laughs> this, <laughs> this episode. <laughs> Banjos. Um, apparently, the Winter Wolves have communicated to the town that um, they're willing to exchange the children in exchange for uh, a large ransom of food and gold. And the uh, looking around the town, you get the feeling that they're barely managing to feed themselves. And this is the most sort of squalid place that you've seen. Um, and the wolves have said until their ransom is paid, no one is allowed to leave town. They vowed to kill anyone who tries. That's why people haven't heard from them lately. Mm -hmm. The wolves give a deadline and I just blanked. Nope. So I think we found our lycanthropy. The town speaker is. Edgra Dermut, a uh, older human, um, looks uh, 
looks like he is out trapping on a semi-regular basis. Um, oh, she, sorry. It's hard to tell through all the winter. Sorry, clothes. what's her name? Edgra, E-D-G-R-A, Dermoot, D-U-R-M-O-O-T. They, the townsfolk urge you to go meet with um, Edra uh, as your uh, new folk, and you may be able to help them out. Yeah, let's go meet Edra. All right. I'm just looking over a quest. Did we find Cora's son? Yes. And killed him. He was one of the people in the castle? Yeah, just making sure. All right. Uh, Edgar Dumroot um, firmly believes that the teenagers are dead uh, and is not interested in giving any food. Um, she's unsure why they're insisting on keeping everyone in town if they want food. Um, and says that you guys are more than welcome to attempt to deal with uh, the Winter Wolves but there isn't much she can do to help. All right. Well, which, I guess I was going to say, which direction should we head out if we're going to try and deal with the wolves? But if they're going to attack anyone that tries to leave town it doesn't matter what direction we leave from they were we were told that the kids were by the stones i think we should go to the stones okay sounds good all right as you guys head uh out towards the stones uh looming around the outskirts of the city you see a very large shadow this entirely white wolf with um looks like maybe one of its back legs is lame sort of limps into your field of vision and introduces himself uh as corin he says uh i am corin well, what do you do here Apparently, I've been kidnapped. <laughs> well, uh, we're new in town. Seems like your whole no one in or out doesn't seem to work. Oh, well, we are, are forced to by our evil master, a an aging and decrepit frost giant named Gargai. Gargai has kidnapped the uh, the two people I believe you're speaking about and is holding them prisoner in his lodge that's about a half a day's walk west of town. You said a frost giant? Yes. Well, why don't we just go and kill Gargai? Then what would you yeah, guys do if we like... did that? Oh, well, Gargai is very abusive. He gave me this wound on my back leg here. Um, I'll, we'll, we'll help you free the prisoners it, because we don't like our guy. All right. That sounds like a good idea. What do you guys think? I'm down to stab a frost giant a couple of times. Yeah. Follow me. Um, and as you guys are trekking, uh, following this large winter wolf through the wilderness, um, you come across a uh, a smaller pack of normal wolves, but um, <clears throat> Corin sort of 
growls at them and raises its hackles and the wolves, which you can tell are gaunt with starvation, um, think better about attacking and uh, leave. Um, as you approach the lodge, you see jutting up out of the vast tundra, a towering edifice built entirely of ice. The dome structure is easily three times the height and width of any building you've seen so far in Ten Towns. The lodge has three tall openings on the east side. On the southern side of the building is a tunnel. Uh, the wolves sniff the air and inform you that Gargai isn't home, but they offer to stand guard for you while you enter the lodge to free the pit, the prisoners. And I'll show you what, um, what it looks like, what the lodge looks like. I look at Ochrist and I whisper, tarp? Tarp? It's a tarp. Is it a tarp? It's a tarp? Is it a tarp? Why are we uh, saying tarp so much? You can roll a... Um, Trap? Tarp? You can roll a insight check if you'd like to see if this guy's giving off any suspicious vibes. Uh, heels, you, there's something about this story that isn't sitting right with you. It's a tarp. Give me two seconds here. You might have a, an observer join the channel shortly. Okay. Um, all right, so you guys are now present on the eastern side middle of the map where the wolves have brought you. I say in Infernal, it's a trap. Okay. Hoping somebody could understand what I, what I meant. I don't I'm don't. i not there. I believe everyone else does not speak Still, Infernal. You're, you're on the map. Am I on the map? I thought I was kidnapped. No, you're not Finn. Yeah, Finn is... He said Syl and Finn. Syl. Both of his characters, oh, Syl geez. and Finn. <laughs> the, those are the names from the module. <laughs> oh, man. He's like, but my name is Syl, and I'm my like, name not Syl like, Not Syl <laughs> Just Syl. <laughs> I thought I was Syl. kidnapped. <laughs> That's he amazing. kept saying that, you guys. Sil and Just, Finn. Nobody caught me until now? What? Just now, yep. And it's spelled F-I-N-N. -N. I heard you. I just assumed you were making a joke of it. Oh, I didn't hear the spelling. I'm sorry. You just said Finn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... What you guys can see is you see the three entrances here. And the two wolves have decided they're going to uh, wait outside here for you guys and keep watch. So do you have a direction you'd like to go? I can scout whichever direction we choose to go. In, the chron in Draconic, I start muttering, it's a trap, it's a trap, it's a trap, it's a trap. And I'll answer back with a big smile on my face. That's fine. It doesn't affect how well, the decisions we make. Well, I feel better now that at least somebody else knows. It's a tarp. You can also um, mentally talk to uh, Dripper. and I thought Dripper had to initiate before I could do that. Mm, I don't know. 
I think I can maintain because that's a him thing. I think I can maintain the connection between them, can't I? Consistently. I mean that that gem there that I have is pretty high. It's pretty powerful. Yeah, he just always yeah. knows what we're thinking. Ooh, let's not go that far because that'd be really strong. Yeah, no, I, I think you could that just, could be really awkward. You can, you can or connect. we have to direct thoughts to him. Make eye contact, and yeah, then I think if you want to think at him, you've got to attract his attention. I try and think of something shiny to to, to flash at him. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Slow down here. I know it's after dark, but <laughs> this is the this is the adult channel. But still, no flashing. I don't have any marbles, okay? So I'm like money, gems, something shiny. All right, we've got two wolves in front of us. Technically behind us, because we're going in and they're staying outside to guard. Yeah. I oh, okay. Sorry, wolf, I thought we were headed this way. The second wolf showed up um, just as you guys were approaching. So you guys came from this direction. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, well, we can follow heels. Okay. All right, so as you guys enter in, you found a, a passageway that is choked with ice. Above you, icicles are densely clustered. Their points sharp as daggers. Um, now, you're trying to move through this, this tunnel. Uh, are you just walking confidently, or...? I am taking my quarter staff and bashing the tips off. Okay. <laughs> I can yeah. move ahead. I, I can move a bit ahead and search for traps and stuff. Okay. Sounds good. And I'll join uh, heels in breaking a safe passage. So we're not quiet, but we're not fast. We're not moving I, quickly through here. I slow down to listen for any groans or cracks in the ice. Okay. Uh, give me a perception check, please. And um, Dripper, give me a uh, investigation as you're looking for traps. Sil, you hear shifting in the room up ahead. Uh, Dripper, this the only real danger that you detect here is um, the ice itself. If you were to be thrown onto it somehow or try to travel through here at a high speed. It could get kind of dangerous, but you guys are dealing with that danger as you shatter your way through. I'd like to mention that that's four twenties in or three twenties in four rolls. That's pretty impressive. As you guys continue on forward. The I make a hand gesture that there's trouble ahead. And I try to reach heels with that. Psst. Okay, I go into like stealth mode and kind of sneak my way up. Okay, I'm gonna stop right where I'm at. Roll a uh, a stealth check. You hear a loud a loud stomping noise as a, as you see the uh, the passageway in front of you open up into a larger oval room. It's covered with walls of glittering ice, um, and you see laying on the ground. Uh, at the entrance to the room, what looks like the hacked up corpse of a giant creature. And looming next to it is a woolly mammoth. Not far from the mammoth, you see a large chair. The mammoth stares down at you with hate in its eyes, says, you are to blame for this, and lowers its head and, is, and assumes a threatening posture. So it's on me, I guess. Or it's it's, uh, it's pawing the ground like a um, like a bull that's about to charge. Is it going to charge at me? Is it looking at me? It's looking. At, uh, you're you're trying to hide, so it, it it may not be looking directly at you, but it is looking in the direction of the party. I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up. 
How is this our fault? You don't even know who we are. You see the, it, it sort of falter a little bit and then it's pawing at the ground. We could be on your side coming to help you and you're accusing us and going to fight us? What kind of dumb move is that? It says your presence here desecrates my master's tomb. Sorry, I farted. Was that an attack fart? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Just Strictly community. Desecration one. If, if I'm going to desecrate, I'm going to leave a little, uh, a few MSPs in the air. Yep, yep, yep. What happened to your master? He was killed by a group of adventurers. They came in here while I was away and killed him and hacked up his body. That sounds terrible. Why would someone do that? I can't think of a reason. I didn't know there were any other adventurers around here. We're new in town. Is the room really well lit? No. It's quite dark. Okay, I'm going to start traveling around the wall. Okay. Hugging the wall, staying in stealth. All right, so you can see in this chunk of ice here is the body. Um, I'm going to roll to see if it spots you. Is that against my 17? Yeah. Shit. All right. So as as you're moving, it turns towards you, looks at you, and says, Stop. Leave this place. Your master is dead. You are free. You aren't tied to anybody. As you mentioned that its master is, is dead, you see rage cloud its eyes, and it raises its giant um, trunk and trumpets angrily. And I'll take initiative. We might have been able to yeah. just turn around and leave, you guys. Hey, we're just hey, close we're to level, level five. five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. We were we were fucking killing that thing one way or another. <laughs> we knew it was gonna die. All right. As you guys are preparing, uh, do be aware that these large squares are four squares. So it is set up to grid properly. Um, Sil, what would you like to do? Do, 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 do. Uh, we're fighting the red thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a giant uh, woolly mammoth. I've got six squares, yeah. And we're gonna cup a fart. Okay. Really desecrating. It rolls a six. Wow. Oh, excuse me. That was a lot of damage for that spell. D twelve rolls an eleven. Dig it. Okay. Uh anything else? Not at the moment. All right, Tia. Okay. And a, mm, I'm going to be back one here. Okay. I'm going to use a bonus action to pop my arms out. So that does... Is it within five feet? Oh, Chris, you're next. It's within 10 feet. 
dex save or two rolls of my martial arts die. Fails. Roll the two minus one. Awesome. Yeah, it's, so it's 2d4 damage. Okay, this is supposed to be a pretty tough fight, but you guys are rolling very well. And I will hit it with my glaive. Nope. You attempt to hit it with your glaive and you miss. I slip yeah. on the ice beside me? You yeah. end up putting a hand on the, the ice around the frost giant's body and the um, mammoth rears up in anger. Uh, anything else? I think that's my turn. Oh, Christ. With these spears of purification, the prison of your flesh becomes a memory. Oh, yeah, do three of those, please. All right, the first one blasts into its face, and it sort of judders from one side to the other, and the, the next two miss. But you do deal nine points of fire damage to it. You see now, it, 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 this is a woolly mammoth, and but there's ice all throughout its hair, so you don't manage to set it on fire. Uh, anything else? Going with no. Going with no. Heels. I look at it and say, you know, we could be very nice masters. <laughs> we could, you could be one of ours. You don't have to fight us. That's your choice. You let me know when you think about it. And then I point to him. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> we could be nice masters. Blam! 15 points of Eldritch Blast damage. Snap. <laughs> Yikes. Isn't that three balls or something? Uh, it will become multiple balls. Oh, it's no, only right so, it's only one? Okay. Yeah. Once she hits five, she gets to do two of those when she attacks. Nice. Which I was thinking ahead then. How close how close are you guys? What did you say your experience was at? Five, two, four, nine? So just over four five. Yeah, 5245. So, 1300. Yeah. Give or take. All right. What are you guys getting for this one? All right, Dripper, your turn. Okay, how high up is this? Um, it's a dead giant body, so uh, between 5 and 10 feet depending on which part of the body you're standing on. So can I run up it? Mm -hmm. Like, like do like a, um, a uh, acrobat. A Legolas? Kind of yeah. Check. Yeah. 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 I want to, my plan is to run up it mm -hmm. and then launch myself off here and onto its back. Awesome. All right. With my dagger and stab into it. Roll me an acrobatics check. It's, not a terribly difficult check because you're, um, you you have some difficulty once you get to the mammoth, scrambling up the side, but running across is not a problem, and so you are now riding on the back of the mammoth. Sorry, I forgot to push down my uh, push to talk there, <laughs> um, and I stab into it with uh, with with booming blade. Oh, nice. Okay. On the dagger as well. All right, so roll me so, attack. So because I'm on its back, do I get sneak attack damage? No. no? It's just a straight It's just a straight yeah. attack. Straight attack. There's no one next to it right now. All right, so that is eight points of damage, and it has booming blade on it. Uh, that is – now it is its turn. And it sets off the booming blade as it charges Ocarist. Oops, I grabbed the wrong thing. Takes three more points of damage. Yeah. Um, Ocarist, have you fixed your um, 
Is your AC right? Okay, my AC is 16. Okay, fix that on your sheet, please. And your hit points are at 25, right? Oh, wait, no, it is 14. Sorry, I was wrong. Okay. It is 14. So, yes, that is correct. All right. So, it tears towards you. I need you to make a strength saving. Th no, you don't need to do that yet. First, it's got to hit you. So, attack. I'm still on its back, right? Yep. Yep. All right. That's a critical hit. Um, yikes. And it ran towards you. All right. Let's roll some damage here. All right, as you as it runs towards you, it knocks you backwards through the air. Um, yikes! I think you might be dead. Like dead, dead, dead. It did twice your it, it, your hit points. Your max hit points are twenty five. Yeah. Oh, oh. All right, Ocarist is down for the count right now. Okay, just down or or dead? He said down, not dead. First he said dead. I'm, going with, the, I'm going with the, what's in our favor, and the last one was down, not dead. I'm going to hold him to it. Okay. Yeah. Because, that yeah, killing one of you guys wasn't exactly the intention. That was a really unfortunate roll. All right, uh, Sil. Uh, five. I, I, I'm going to risk the, uh, the opportunity attack. Okay. Uh, and... So you're going to take an, a hit? Well, maybe. It depends on the roll. 24? Shit. Yeah, that'll do. 26 points Damn of damage it. as it hits you. So you take the hit. Uh, and I lay on hands at touch one point, stand her up. Okay. Can I do that as a touch to grab her arm and lift her up? Uh, I don't think you can stand her up. Um, you know what? I'm going to ignore the double rule right now because it's ridiculously unfair. All right. Um, so, yes. Ocarist, you are conscious on the ground, um, but you have a level of exhaustion because you got hit so hard. What are my hit points at? One. Oh no. Uh, Sil, that's your action. Uh, would you like to do anything else? Uh, I think I've got a bonus action spell. Mm -hmm. Shield of Faith. Which gives you plus two AC. That uh, for concentration up to 10 minutes, yes, plus 2 AC. All right. A shimmering field appears and surrounds the creature of my choice, myself. All right, that puts you up to 20. So you stand half a chance this thing might not hit you. Tia, your turn. All right. Um, I am going to move forward and try and get its attention. Um, with Dripper on its back, do I get advantage? I will give you advantage, yep. Okay, so I'm going to use my glaive. Wow. And I'm going to use a key point to do my astral arms twice. Okay. All right, 27 points of damage as you lay into this thing that has just laid out Ocarist. Um, that's your... And I stepped close enough to help Dripper with advantage. Yeah, Dripper and will have... Sneak yeah, and everything. Sneak, yeah. Ocarist, you have your you have a level of exhaustion, so any ability checks you roll are currently a disadvantage. Um, you are lying on the ground, quite hurt. 
What would you like to do? <laughs> Maybe take a potion? Okay. Uh, there's a bonus action. Is that a bonus action? Okay. Um, I don't have to be standing up to cast a spell, right? Uh, it really depends on the spell, but no, not really. Catapult! <laughs> I could I could take a potion, or... Oh, she can do both. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, are you doing the potion first? Yes. I don't think I actually have a clicky button-y thing for it. No, it's just 2d4 plus 2, if it's a normal potion. So five. Yay! Five. So five. And and then yeah, I'm gonna grab a convenient chunk of ice from near my head and huck it at the dude. Okay, roll me your catapult attack. Do I do that with disadvantage? Um, I don't think so. And I don't think you can with disadvantage because they've got to make a dex save. They got a 12. So that's 14 points of bludgeoning damage to this thing. Uh, it is starting to show signs of, uh, of flagging. You guys have done some pretty serious damage to this thing. Uh, heals. You chose wrong. <laughs> That's going to hit. That does four points of damage. You should pick on somebody who can handle you. <laughs> uh, that's Heal's turn. Dripper. You can have advantage okay. on the attack and sneak. Okay. So what I want to do is, I know I'm on its back, mm -hmm. but I want to get off its back. But as I'm getting off its back, I want to stick my dagger in the side of it and slide down. Yeah, so that you're controlled fall and causing damage. Yes. I dig it. Yes. You carve a giant furrow into the side of this mammoth as you descend, dealing 16 points of damage. Yeah. Okay. okay, and I want to. I want to land. I want to land here, mm -hmm. and when I land on the ground, I put my hood up. Okay. Now, can I bonus action throw a potion of healing at somebody? You can bonus action to take a potion yourself. Um, you could throw a potion about, to someone, but they wouldn't be able to consume it. What about? Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, actually, I'm just going to mage ledger hand it sure. over. Right. Like, like, I can just do that, right? Okay. So I'm going to throw that over to... Now, Ocarista, I know you're really hurt. Um, are you going to heal yourself? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm pointing to the pictures on my monitor, right? Are you going to heal yourself? Uh, Spencer, are you going to heal yourself next next round? Are you going to fix yourself up? Uh, I, I can a bit. I've only got level one spells. I'm holding off until this fight's over. Okay. Okay, so Okris, I'm gonna assume that you're gonna stay at range. I kick I mage ledger hand the healing potion over to Spencer's character. Okay. And that's my last one. Okay. Okay. So Spencer, you've got a healing potion. And that was Dripper's turn. Uh Norseru is going to charge heals. Because heals has been calling it out. Um Tia, you may take an attack of opportunity. All right. Oh, is it still? A, would it still be an advantage? Yeah, because Dripper was on the other side from it. As it charges towards heels with murderous intent in its eyes, you see Tia leap up into the air behind it and describe how you kill this thing. I just have had enough and bring my weapon down on top of it. 
and you cave in its uh, its cerebral cavity, and it collapses down to the ground. Uh, that's 460 XP for that guy. Fifty-seven oh five. Can you confirm? About five hundred from the level. Oh, no. oh, 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 I didn't even look. Seven hundred. I go seven ninety-five. Do I hear eight? Okay, I walk over to. here so i can see both okris and sill and i'm like wow okay you guys don't look the greatest let's take care of that and i will cast cure wounds do you on uh, okris dead well we gotta we gotta make Not sure it's yet I gotta use my spells first, and okay. then have and a short we rest. Don't know if the area is safe or anything, anyways. And we got two wolves, giant exactly. wolves, right outside. So and yes, but all my damage is all uh, cantrips. All my healing are actual spells. Yeah. So as you guys, so ogres take ten. Twelve. Twelve. Sorry. Yes, twelve. Um, as as the silence sort of begins to reign over this place. You hear some howling from the entrance. Hey, Phil. Mm -hmm. Do I know anything about um, hunting traps? Mm -hmm. Roll me a survival check. Yeah, apparently you know a lot about hunting traps. All right. I'm going to tell everyone to come inside. I have picked up a hunting trap when we went over the cliff. When I went over the cliff. Can I set it out up? Like on this side of this thing, and we'll all stand on this side so the wolves can come in for their treasure, their supper, um, and hit the hunting trap, maybe? I like that plan. Sure. Guys, get over here. Okay. Uh, heels, okay. As, you're, as you guys are prepping for arrival, um, are you casting any more spells? I am. Hang on two seconds. I accidentally uh, closed my window. And is anyone else doing anything? I'm going to search the room behind us and make sure that we're safe. Okay. Move your tune. I need one second. Yep. I'm going I'm to go, like, you know, look at this throne. And... So you're not going to leave the body there for, like, the wolves, okay. for a marker for the wolf? Um, it's a large uh, chair formed out of ice. Um. There is... Does anyone speak giant? I think I do. Those seven are for you, Sil. Roger. Okay, thanks for the seven. Uh, yes, Sil does speak giant. All right, carved All right. into the, the front of the seat is a um, giant rune that says ice. That's very... Does it say it three times? Ice. Very, ice. very simplistic uh, rune there that says ice. Ice, ice, baby. Mm -hmm. Are you, uh, as you're checking out this chair, are you sitting on it? Yeah, I like. Sounds like, like a tarp. You know, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. I got a, I get, I, I got a thing for that. Um. Uh. So. Like, like I'm searching it, right? You know, yeah. right? Like, like I'm, I'm looking for loot, man. You know. Okay. You, you I want that magic items. The chair. You're not finding a lot of compartments. As you climb up into the chair, you get a strong feeling that if you were to sit in this chair and focus, you could summon a blizzard that surrounds this lodge. It's kind of a like a defense. This asshole. Oh, okay, okay. I thought it was like summon a blizzard anywhere I want it, like. Yeah. That's like power. <laughs> no, if you can summon a blizzard anywhere you want, this might be where the dragon's launching things from. That would be really bad news. Phil's having a really bad day and is killing the whole party. 
Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there isn't a lot to find in this room. Um, anybody else casting any spells? Because you're starting to hear noise coming from the entrance. I'm gonna hold off. Remember on that the rest healing of the healing. I, I think you're, I'm gonna hold off on healing you guys. You're you're gonna have to live with what you got for now, but I'll keep you alive. Um, I. I, I mentioned to Silasly the to remember about the healing potion I gave him. I don't I can't see how many hit or hurts. Oh, he's got ten. Okay, he's only down ten. That's fine. Yeah, down ten and uh, holding on to the potion. I, I tap myself with some lay on hands as well. Fine. Oh Christ is only down seven, so she'll be fine. Right. So the wolves come running down the hall. And let me roll a save for the trap. Just need to pull up their winter wolf. Are they running at the same speed down the hall? Yes. Do they have to look out for the spikes and stuff? Or we took care of all of them? They seem to know this area fairly well. I want to use persuasion on one of them. All right. <laughs> I got to work out how to word this. Hang on. I got a gooder. Okay. Uh, did you I'm going to say, if this one's ahead, then I would use that one. I, I'd probably see him first coming down the hall. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to cast a suggestion. I think that's what it's called, not persuasion. Okay. Suggestion, yes. Uh, I'm going to suggest to it that, hey, look at all the meat that he could have on his own if he was the one still alive. So... We don't want the meat. He's got to kill his the the other wolf, and then it's all his. What's the spell save on that? I got this. Hang on. Can't be charmed or immune to the effects. Yeah. And it's a wisdom saving throw. It rolls a 10. You can see it, it, it turns and snaps at its buddy, and then its eyes immediately fill with remorse. So you've taken away its uh, its attack this round. Um, and I'll take initiative orders from everybody, please. I, you hear me softly chuckle as, uh, as this happens. This motherfucker's going for... Oh, excuse my language. This guy's going first. Yeah. I, uh, I I thought I clicked on myself, but I I got a note saying I didn't. So if you could throw me out there, I, I rolled a a one to make a three total. I'd rather low, roll low on initiative than a, than an attack. Okay, so the. Uh... Corin yells, Cannon, what are you doing? And Cannon says, I think they used magic on me. And then he's going to turn towards you guys. And let's go descending. All right, Dripper, you're first. What would you like to do? Did one of them hit the trap? Uh, yes, and it is stuck. It's got to roll a strength check to free itself. Which one's that? The one with the snail? Yeah. 
Okay. All right. And he was snapped at by the one below him. Gonna move to there. Okay. And um. Hmm. I yell at him. I say, hold on a sec. I got to find one there that's. A duck, works, a duck walks into a pharmacy and says to the pharmacist, I'd like some chapstick. The pharmacist says, but you're a duck. How are you going to pay for that? The duck says, it's okay. Just put it on my bill. Right. I knew it was right. coming, but it was still fantastic. <laughs> My wife is groaning in the living room. <laughs> and I cast Tasha's hideous laughter at it. Wisdom 13 saving throw. Okay. What is with my rolls today? They rolled a two. All right. Can you click that Tasha's hideous button? Oh, I don't have it. Um... I, do, I, I, I don't have it on this character sheet. Um, they make a save at the end of their turn and whenever they take damage, right? That's right. Yeah. And they fall prone. They are prone. Okay. You're lucky these things are awakened. <laughs> well, I was talking, so I was like, oh, well, it's got to have some matter of intelligence, right? I'll be right back since my turn's over. Yep. Also, remember, I have my hood up on my thing, so I'll, yep, I'll yep, display yep. Beautiful. Shit. I'll be right back. Tia. All right. I know I don't get, like, a sneak attack or anything, but I hid sort of around the corner, so I'm going to step forward and... Actually, I don't need to step... Can I hit from here, or is that coverage? I can step to here, you right? Step, yeah, you can step up okay. like that. Um, it's prone, so you'll have advantage on the attack. Yeah. That hits. And I'll do a key point and... And double punch it. Boom, boom. Both of those hit. These things, AC is not super high. I got to remember not to push the button so close together, because... It wasn't identical, though. No, but... No, but... It's almost identical. It's almost max damage on your punches, though, so that's pretty good. Um, all right, anything else you're doing? You could. Um, I'm gonna move back because I didn't get in within range. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> that is impressive. All right, so this one is going to. Uh, roll a strength check to try to bust itself free from the trap. Um, and it cannot free itself. And Tasha's hideous laughter is a wisdom save of 15. Right? No, it's much lower than that. It's like a 12. Because it's dripper. 12 or 13. Let me have a look at Dripper's sheet real quick. Thirteen, yeah. Alright. It fails that save too. So it is still incapacitated. Neither of them can reach with that. That is their turns. Okrist. Yeah, I'm going to spear purification and prison flesh and boom! Which one? Scorching Ray. I just had to click over to the right page. Yeah, which, uh, which one? I'm going to do yeah. two. Yeah, I'm going to do two to the one that's further up, and then one to the one underneath. Okay. 
Wow, all of those are going to hit. 11 points of damage to the top one. 22! And 11 yeah, the, I mean, like, yeah, 11 points of damage to each of them. Yeah, nice work. All right, you launch bolts of fire at these wolves that are covered in, in, um, in ice and snow, and they both sort of howl out with anger. Uh, heels, your turn. I like very <laughs> intent on doing some harm. Name to misbehave. I'm aiming to misbehave. But we, I know we got something bigger to kill, so I'm saving one thing. Our last fireball will not be used here. <laughs> so not the one that I, the one that's entrapped. Yeah. That's the one that I am going to blast on. Oh, I need to make a quick save. Nope. Okay. All right. So you blast the trapped one. It takes nine points of damage. And I already rolled that. All right. Uh, Sill. Oh, you were to. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, I get to go last. Yeehaw. Go, Sill. I think I got enough movement. Yes, just enough. Okay. Desecrating this location even more. More cup of fart. On save. So has that thing like have you been hitting the uh, the saving throws for that thing? Uh, it's been failing them all. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. It's gonna make one more saving throw because it just got cup of farted. Now it rolled a six. Wow, it's it's like down for like a minute. It's like six rounds. Yeah. Duck bills are great things. Duck duck bills are apparently the ultimate in weaponized uh, bird parts. Dripper, your turn. I can go to here. Yep. And I, it's prone. It's prone, so you have advantage. Well, excellent. And good thing too. Fourteen points of damage, and it gets to make a save. Uh, you see it stop laughing. Well, no shit. <laughs> it's been beaten almost almost to death it's not finding things very funny right now uh anything else you want to do do you still have a bonus action Sarah. going with no all right Sorry. tia your turn yeah yeah i'm not i'm not gonna do anything yeah apologize for that that's right you were gone till just the beginning of your turn so um, we have, the kids are playing with friends in the backyard and they just showed up with their dogs. So it was just to make sure the dogs were good before. Okay. So we've got one left. Two left. Oh, both of them left. Yep. Okay. I guess I'll come and beat on this one that's trapped. Actually, I can still stay yep. away from it. Right. Uh, it's no longer an advantage. No, but I'll take that first roll anyhow, because that's how we do. And I'll spend my last key point. Okay, and both of those hit. Man, these wolves did not stand a lot of chance against you guys. All right. Um, all right, the first wolf turns, and I need Sill and Dripper to please make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, 
ignore the advantage. Okay. All right, you both succeed, so you'll take half damage on this. Uh, so that's 12 points of damage each of cold damage as it breathes out this uh, blast of winter air. Oh, uh, I, I didn't realize that was a that was a magic spell. Uh, it's an ability more than a magic spell. Okay. Breath but you made All the right. save anyway. Uh, made the save, so yeah, having advantage on it really would make a difference. So twelve. Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, Ocarist, your turn. Yes, it is. And I'm going to uh, pick up a chunk of ice and catapult it at the non-trapped one. Okay, it is prone, but it's a deck save on catapult, right? Oh, I think so. It's its turn coming up. Yep. Roll me the catapult. Dex save 13. Wow, they can't save to save their lives. Literally. Minus 11. Nice. There's a huge chunk of ice smashes into the creature. Um, anything else? Hey, are those bonfires um, cantrip? Yep. Yes. Yep. Put it on the one under the one that's trapped. Cantrip doesn't mean bonus action. Oh yeah, sorry. All right, heals. Yeah, th this guy is looking almost dead. This guy's looking pretty close behind him. Well, the almost dead friend. As I raise my hand and I say. You know, you should have just ate your brother. <laughs> no, that's exactly what you need to. So you do your little <clears throat> blast him into oblivion. But he's so that's this guy and he's dead. Sill, your turn. Do 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 do. Uh, is that one standing up or is it prone? It What's is the snail? The, the snail is because it's trapped. It's it's sort of staked to the floor. So it's standing, but it can't move. Unless it breaks free of the trap. <clears throat> uh, let's break out the war hammer. All right. You smack. smash this thing for 14 points of damage. It is next thing to dead uh anything else you're doing uh no we don't have anything else i can do right now okay dripper your turn you could probably give it a hangnail and it would die from that <laughs> i'm going to one two three four Four, go here and attack this one. With advantage. With advantage and sneak. 15. That does it. How do you kill this thing? Um, now, I mean, we've skinned every other animal that we've come across. So as I run by it, I start the process of skinning it by making the incision. Slaying it, it while it's alive. Oh yeah. my god, you're great. Yeah, yeah, and then and then to make sure that it's dead, I like like I cut along its tummy, then I cut along its neck, and then I rip rip the skin off of it. It's a little brutal, I know, but I'm just trying to be time efficient here. It's like that guy on YouTube who sets up something like a dinner setting and then pulls out the sheet or the tablecloth and leaves all the. You're doing this with his fur? Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. alive. Skinned. Not anymore. All right. So you begin the process of, of skinning this thing as you as it's alive. And by the end of the process, it is no longer living. And that was...
worth 280 XP. Silence descends on you as you sit in the, this frozen hunter's lodge. I'm going to sit in the chair. 280, right? 280, yep. All right, you sit in the chair and you discover that if you wanted, you could summon a uh, a blizzard that will engulf the lodge. Um, it extends one mile in all directions and it'll last for eight hours. But this is a thing you can do only every 10 days. Huh. Could get a long rest. I in. jump off the chair and I, I, I call Ochrist over and I'm like, think we could melt this with one of your campfires? Uh, absolutely. I, I like this idea. Well, we had mentioned earlier that we could skin, we've been skinning things and taking meat and stuff. Can we try and... We had other people curing the meat, smoking the meat, right? Usually, yeah. Did we learn how to do that while we were You've you've seen it done, so that's about your level of expertise right now. You can cook some. Yeah, we've got three hides here, um, and I'd also like to try and and um, get my trap back if I can. Okay, okay. It's a little damaged. The giant creature um, was in the process of trying to destroy it, um, but with a little bit of work, you're able to repair it. Those With things. my thaumaturgy, I want to help Ochorus try and melt the chair. Okay. How many um, bonfires are you throwing out there? I'm going to do one in the center of the seat, because I find that especially funny. And then one at the base of each leg. They're not concentration, are they? Let me double check, but I don't think so. Um, Dripper, should we sort of explore while people are... There's two exits from here. Do we want to make sure that it's safe? With my thaumaturgy, I rotate, making each of the bonfires bigger and hotter. Yeah, to try and melt this thing faster. Sounds good. Yeah, um, you're you're being helped by uh, Dripper and Sill, I'm guessing. So give me three um, survival checks with advantage. Dripper got one. Good. And you Does one more. Sil want to do the last one? Sil, you got a survival check for me? Okay. So the frost wolf pelts that you pull off, you think what you managed to pull off once it's tanned properly will be worth 50 gold. And you managed to pull off 50 gold worth of hide off of the mammoth as well. So each of you can add a 50 gold hide to your inventory. Sweet. Okay. And you start trying to cook some meat. Uh, Ochrist, was it concentration for the bonfires? Bonfires? It is. Yeah. Okay, so it's just one. Uh, roll me a d10 like 10 times. Or just roll 10 d10. Okay, again. Yep. Roll me another 10d10. 61. All right. Uh, as you, uh, as Heels amps up the power of your uh, bonfire and you let it sit over the course of 10. Over the course of about two minutes, you explode this um, this seat, it sort of melts, 
cracks and shatters into a whole bunch of pieces. Um, and you do not detect any magic ore from the remaining remaining shards of ice. That should help. Good work, hot stuff. What about the giant that's in this big ice block? Yeah, I'm coming over to take a look at it. Uh, someone Should we thought that too? <laughs> someone did some serious damage to this giant. It is. It looks like it was torn to pieces. There doesn't appear to be anything of value on the body. Let's leave it frozen. It might smell. Unless we want to burn the corpse. Nah, I'm okay with it being frozen and ice. All right, who's going where? North to Alaska, baby. All right. So you discover that there are two large openings, uh, one to the left and one to the right. Well, I don't think we've been quiet, so I don't think it matters. And the giant that's supposed to be here is dead, so we should be fine. All right, so to the Dining left, room. To the left is a massive table hewn from a single block of ice. It's surrounded by chairs made of ice. Many of the chairs are chipped and cracked. Is there anything of interest in this room? It looks like this was just some form of, of meeting room for giants. Nothing uh, of interest in this room. All right. Ooh. There's a dead shark over here. Well, as, big fish. As you enter this uh, room, uh, the it smells quite kind of stanky in here. A uh, sour stench of decay fills your nostrils. Lying on the ice-packed ground is the frozen corpse of a whale crudely butchered uh, beside it is the blade in the shape of a paring knife but it's about the size of a long sword looks like this room was used to uh, carve and harvest uh, carve up whales to harvest their oil an alcove to the on the west side of this room next to the whale there contains a uh, foot tall stone chest that is half buried in ice. Hey, Dripper, come look for traps. That's in this one here? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I will search for traps. Okay. Roll me a investigation. It's investigation, check. right? As far as you can uh, ignore tell, the advantage, I'm sorry. I'll turn yeah, that no worries. I, I just do automatically. Um, unless I, so if you actually do have advantage, then, and I, and I haven't asked you to roll an advantage, remind me. Cause otherwise I'm treating it as not. Um, it's really difficult to tell if there are any, uh, traps because this thing is under like a foot of solid ice, but you don't see anything that looks dangerous. Should we melt it? Or just open it? You said it was half out of the ice, right? Is the lid out? Uh, ha no, it's half of it is buried under ice. So you need to dig out that half. Uh, melt it! Okay. All right. I need to go is get my chest portal. Is it ice? Chest? Yeah. Oop, did we lose? I think she's... Catherine needs power cord. Need some juice yeah. for her device. All right. I don't think that she would have any trouble coming along and helping you guys melt that loose. Um, inside, you see a bunch more tools that the giant used for tearing apart whales. Um, in a corner of the box, at Tia, you find a small scrimshaw goat. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's a, a goat carved out of ivory. Uh, it's got an uh, approximate worth of 25 gold. So if you write that down, then I don't have to come back when you guys decide to sell things. There does not seem to be anything else of interest in this room. I'm going to put my door down and open it up and put the goat in my treasure room. Okay. Okay. Leave you guys behind as I walk through this portal for a couple minutes and come back. Tia puts down this small door and it grows to humanoid size. She walks in and then walks back out and picks the door back up and it shrinks. Weird. It wouldn't work for um, resting in because the door doesn't close when I'm in it. So, hey, it goes out. There's an exit this way. I guess I could put all of you guys in there and close it, but I don't know what would happen to you guys. Should we check the other side? Because this is just an exit to the outside. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you guys head back into the center chamber. And let me roll. What about the chest? The chest had a small scrimshaw goat and some fl- um, flensing tools oh. in it. Okay. All right. Sorry. My bad. My bad. No worries. Uh, once you guys get into the room with the that, that next room... Um, there is a very big fur bedroll. Looks like it's stitched together from multiple creatures. It looks like this was where the um, the giant slept. Uh, there doesn't appear to be anything in here other than the giant fur bedroll. The furs are um, not very well tanned and stitched together inexpertly. Looks like it might keep people warm, but there isn't a lot of value to them because they've deteriorated significantly it's as big as a tent yep do we want a fur tent a smelly poorly made fur tent i'm sure we can find somewhere better to sleep uh the next room right it has some large barrels um hey okris there's barrels five large barrels they smell quite strongly of fish. You son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> um, if you crack one of them, you discover that um, these are barrels of whale oil. Um, and you know that that's used as a fuel source in a lot of the ten towns that aren't close to forests. So if well, we you, should get this back. Valuable. If you can find some way to transport these back to town, each one is worth 50 gold. Ooh. That's, uh, what's down the 250. hole? What's down the hole? Roll a uh, investigation check. Uh, all right. You find in the hole um, a strange substance that coats a small portion of the um, of the wall. <clears throat> it looks like there was some type of creature through here that left something behind. Um, anyone who um, who Dripper tells about this, feel free. Oh, and and heals. Uh, feel free to roll me an Arcana check. Okay, Dripper, you can tell that uh, and heals. Uh, you can tell that this is Thrym. Uh, it is um, a secretion that remorhazes uh, exude small quantities of shortly before they give birth. Uh, they are used to craft uh, potions of cold resistance. And a bottle of Thrym is worth about 250 gold. So if anyone... Who's got containers? ...with alchemy supplies... Um, you can, 
um, you can capture it. I have a poisoner's kit. I have a poisoner's kit. Would there be any vials in that? I can empty out my oil flask. I have a small... Um, where is it? Here. I have an empty wine skin you guys can have. I just, I'm not going to be able to um, collect it myself. Is anyone proficient with alchemy supplies? No, I, no. I'm with disguise kit, poisoner's kit, and thieves tool. So like pretty much everything but the one that you're asking for. I have a bunch of flasks. Mostly oil, and I got some ink bottles that I can get. Uh, I can empty out. All right. Um, so who's who's gonna work on this? And I'll I'll let you know how much of the value you managed to extract. I will. It's worth lots. Okay. Who else is helping? I'll help. All right. Heels. Roll me a. Uh, a, roll me an intelligence check, just straight intelligence, and Dripper, roll me just a straight dex check. Wow. Wasn't meant to be. Don't fall in the hole! <laughs> yeah! Oh my god! <laughs> I'll give you my immovable rod first. <laughs> Alright, so... Between the two of you, you gather some of the material. You're not quite sure how much it's worth, but you can go ahead and put down 50 gold. Which you would find out later. All right, you've searched most of this place. Anyone remember what you're here for? We didn't find the... Yeah, where are the kids? Yeah, the kids aren't here. Hmm. Still looks over at heels above our resident scrivener. Uh, I haven't seen the kids. Have you seen any kids? Gargai the Frost Giant is dead. Mm -hmm. We can't find the kids. I'm wondering if the kids killed them. We found a kitchen, but we didn't find... Well, the mammoth said a party killed them. So do you think the party took the kids? I don't know. The wolves lied to us. The wolves didn't say anything about another group coming here. No. Yeah, but, but uh, the, the, have we looked through the whole place? The mammoths, then. There was another entrance, wasn't there? Yeah, maybe we should go back and try that entrance. Yes, there is another entrance we haven't quite made it out of. I just saw outside and came back in. All right, dude. All right. As you guys, uh, as you guys travel around, you find uh, Scylla and Finn in a metal cage. It looks like this was originally designed to hold that mammoth. Um, they're quite frostbitten, um, but still alive, a little bit feral. Um, but throw them a fish. <laughs> they tear it apart. Um, all right, so the, the children are perfectly willing to follow you. 
Should we get the uh, mammoth bedroll and wrap them up in it so they can stay warm while we get them home? Or at least cut some chunks out of off of it? Yeah. Okay. Can they carry a barrel full of oil? Because those are 50 gold each, man. We might as well use them. The barrels weigh can... 500 pounds. Holy snap. I think we need I to get make a... Uh, um... So was that a no? We make yeah, a Finn, sled. They could be really That's a no. strong. Finn, whose strength is incredibly magically enhanced, could barely carry one of these. Just barely. What about drag? Let's. Who's on a sled? Maybe. What if we had? What the if we had the barrels laying down on the mammoth thing, and tried to drag them out? Could we do that? The mammoth thing. The mammoth hide. The mammoth bedroll. Oh, the bedroll. What if we took... Hey, what if we took the ivory tusks off of the mammoth and used them as sled poles and then build a sled on top of it with the leather? Like a raft. Right? 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 All right. <laughs> we have a bag of water just... that would fit some barrels of oil in it? Maximum. They weigh 500 pounds. It would tear it apart. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure about the maximums. Actually, should we grab the ivory from the mammoth? I mean, I'm sure that that's worth money too. We can Some try. Thought, but yeah. Actually, given that people here seem to work a lot in ivory, that's what scrim shanders do. Perfect. Let's do it. We can get something for one of the ends or both of the ends. One from each tusk. Mm -hmm. All right, roll me a survival check to chop some um, tusks off. Nice. All right. I don't know what those would be worth. Helping. We're, we're not planning on um, selling them anyways. We're planning on hiring someone to make them into decorative things for our inns. For your inn? oh, okay. To make our inns more fancy. And you have two inns and you have two tusks. So, I'm doing good. All right, so you can probably push one of these back to town. Um, but you may need to uh, make arrangements to have some people come help you move the other ones. Sounds uh, fair. You are exhausted, though. You don't think that making the trip back to town uh, tonight would... Well, you could try, but you'd probably have to make some exhaustion checks. Let's uh, leave it for tomorrow. We'll go first thing in the morning after we're rested up. How do you guys think on that? Sounds good. So, so I went and looked it up. How much is ivory in in D and D five e? And uh, somebody rolled a nineteen on their roll survival check. I rolled a twenty, mm -hmm. and everything these guys can find is that it's two thousand gold pieces for a tusk, and we got two of them. <laughs> so. Don't use that as a baseline. I just thought it was humorous. I don't think we need 2,000 gold right now. Okay. And we that, have decorations for That's basically a, a green, green magical item for all of us. Yeah. All right. Um, so how are you guys? Are you guys going to sleep for the night or are you going to push to town? Sleep. Uh, sleep for the night? We, we got to watch the kids though, right? Yeah. But you guys have got them set up with furs and stuff so they're not freezing to death anymore. I'll share my rations while I fell asleep. Mm -hmm. you can do it. I can, I, can, I can make us a nice little fire. Nice. Alright, so you guys hold up, sleep for the night. The trip back to town the next day is uneventful. Um... You get back to town. The town is more than willing to buy the barrel of oil off of you guys. Um, and they're willing to help you ship the other four someplace that can afford it. The one barrel of oil will keep this town in fairly good shape for quite some time. How much are they worth again? I missed that. 50 gold each. You get the feeling that that's most of the wealth that's in this town but it lets them be warm for the first time in a long time. Um, Syl and Finn's mom is quite thankful to have them back, and she gives you guys this. 
her husband won them off of an adventurer in a drinking contest. Do you guys see that? Ooh, those are pretty. pretty. Who wants them? Any of us, to be honest. Yeah, they're good for any of us. What do you think? We roll roll a d20 and then find out who gets the highest? Well, the last, that's like our equivalent of Rochambeau. The last item was that Pearl of Power, and I, I, I picked that one up, so I, I sh probably should roll last on this, if at all. And he's got the Wand of the War. Trying to... But yeah, who's, who's who rolling? doesn't have a green eye? I think it's safe uh, to say uh, no matter how we do this, Akarist is not getting any new boops. <laughs> oh, <holy laughs> Unless fuck. we're going for lowest. That's that's a pretty poor roll, dude. Are, are we cutting for crit? <laughs> Dripper gets the boops. Wait, do you? <laughs> Do you don't have to human feet? Human feet. <laughs> I feel like, would you? Why would you? How would the? Do you have claws? Hey, oh, hey! Don't question. Don't question it. I rolled a twenty. <laughs> his, his I'll wear them on my head. <laughs> he's become humanoid with that roll. <laughs> oh my god! All right, jot those down. Let's take a five-minute bio break. And uh, I'll let you guys know what's happening next. All right. Okay, sounds good. Oh, I've got to do something because I'm the one who's doing the recording. Switch to scene.
<sighs> All right, so another couple of minutes, and Trish will be back. All right. Okay, that's out of the brain. I'm done. No more. <laughs> no more. No more taking hobbits anywhere. Did we get any experience for rescuing the kids? You really should, but there isn't any in the mud. We're melting the chair. Fair enough. Sorry. And I think you guys are going to be over leveled for the next part of the module anyway. But we'll find out. All right. So you spend the. Uh, you, so you had a long rest and you traveled back to town. Um, Dripper, you've been feeling drawn southwards the entire time you guys were at the lodge. You have a feeling you could lead the party somewhere that is trying to attract your attention. Okay, I let the party know. Like and some I'm, sort of psychic? Yeah, he's feeling this psychic pressure that is drawing him southwards. Uh, okay. Can we see the big map where we... Uh... Oh, yeah. Two seconds. So are we back in town? We're back in town, right? And I'm and I'm yes. feeling this. Can we, can we ask around to find out what's south of Dugan's Hole? The locals tell Just, you that recently um, a meteor crashed into the mountains south of Dugan's Hole. But that's about the only thing that they can think of that you would be doing down there. Uh, there are some forests. Um, the, the trail that leads out of the 10 towns is down that way as well, but that's about it. I think we should go and discover this meteor site. Yeah, maybe. Is, that, is, is this where we want to go guys? Sound good? Oh, we don't know how we got here. So maybe some other people came that way too. All right. So you provision up. Um, Where is Torga on her circuit? Because we've got some crap to sell. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good that's a good point. I'd I'd like to spend some time transferring some of these little things that I have into into real money. Uh, roll an intelligence check, heels. See if you remember what she told you. You're expecting me to remember things? No, I'm no. going to roll for it. <laughs> That's why he's asking you to roll. <laughs> <laughs> By the, the fact that you asked me the question, I assumed you didn't have it written in your notes. You know she does a circuit. Uh, you know that uh, when you guys left her, she was out in Targos and you headed to Bryn Shander without her. Um. It'd be a fairly reasonable guess to guess that she's on this side of the ten towns, on the eastern side, but you're not sure which town. Probably somewhere like Cardinaval or Koenig. Yeah. You do know that other than Bryn Shander, the next largest town is East Haven. It's four hours to Goodmead, correct? Correct. But you guys are getting prepped for a, a trip into the... Um, into the wilderness. Correct. Um, I appreciate us going south, and I'm all on board, but we may want to pop to Goodmead just to say that people in Diggins Hole are okay and see if Torg is there. I know it's an extra eight hours. It's another day out of our trip. Um... We might even be able to sell in good meat as well because they were a bigger town. Yeah. All right. I asked Dripper, is his yearning 
going to be intensified or, or does he have any inkling if he waits an extra day? This is not a thing that's ever happened to you before, Dripper. What do you think? I I have no idea. All I know is, is I have a pull for for me or us to go south. I mean, we could we could head south and then go look for this person after. Well, it's it's not looking for a person. It's it's more to sell and get rid of some of the extra weight that we're carrying. So that way, when we go into the woods, we're a little more prepared to carry extra stuff. It's up to you guys. The so are you guys headed to Goodmead? Yeah, let's go to Goodmead. Let's well, go. we've we've cleaned out Dugan's hole. Uh, other than coming back for picking up leftover stuff. Well, yeah. no reason to stay here. Yeah, but the question is, do we go north east to Goodmead, or do we go south from here? Uh, follow the roads. I, I wouldn't go cross-country with blizzards about. That that sounds pretty risky. But we just took off. Dripper's, Dripper's got a fairly strong sense that he should go south into the wilderness. I say we follow Dripper to Goodmead and then we go south and follow his instincts. Can we not leave the extra heavy stuff here with the people of Dugan's Hole and come back for it after we've investigated what is going on with Dripper? Yeah, can we rent a chest or a storage room? Or I'm sure they would love to have a little extra gold and they would love to store it for us for a very reasonable rate. Uh, they're actually willing to sell you a small building um, if you'll let them keep another one of those barrels of fish oil. Done? Well, I ask you guys, I'm like, done? So who's who's keeping track of our assets everywhere here? You are? Okay. So we have a storage building or something like that in Dugan's Hole. We can if we want to give them one of the barrels. What was that? Wanderer's Rest is in Tremoline. Yeah. And Repose is in Care Dineval, I believe. Yeah. I thought Wanderer's Retreat. Oh, Wanderer's Rest is in Lonelywood, not Tremoline. Lonelywood. Yeah. We have Lonelywood and Tremoline. Tremoline? No. Care something. One of the cares has a. Care, yeah, sorry. Care Dineval. All right, so you buy a building. Are you going to name it? Stash? stash. <laughs> yes, stash. The stash. The hidden stash. Stash, you make stash face? Wanderer's repo. And then we got to decide what we're st stashing there. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, the ivory for sure. Whatever we, we can afford to carry, right? Yeah. Big stuff. There's a couple things that I missed on the sheet that I had in my, um, sorry. There's a couple things that I had on my sheet that I did not add to the group loot, so I'm going to store some of that in there.
All right. I also ask around if there's any magic users in the area that would be able to recharge the charm for the Liaman's tiny hut. Dugan's Hole has no magic users. I'm going to buy a sling. Yeah, absolutely. This is a little trapper's town. Um, they have all kinds of, of hunting type implements. Uh, five E weapons. It's, slings are super cheap. It's basically a strip of cloth. Sling. One silver. Awesome. Is it strength based or dex based? Dex. It is a it simple, is simple ranged weapon. What are you proficient with weapons wise? Simple weapons. So yes. And what's the damage? 1d4 bludgeoning. Uh, it's probably plus dex, yep. Yeah. Uh, range is 3120. I bet you that wouldn't hurt if I had one as well. Okay. Pick up a sling as well. I'll pick up a sling as well. And then start collecting some stones. <laughs> it's a theme. I laugh in short bow proficiency. You what? I he said I was in short bow proficiency. <laughs> I found some. Um, I, I don't know what you're laughing about. Uh, Paladin's proficient so. in everything. All right, so you guys. It's really difficult to leave things behind. <laughs> you guys set up a bunch of stuff in your in your new stash house. Are you, uh, Silty and Dripper, are you leaving your hides? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah. Okay. The people of, of Dugan's Hold will, uh, will tan those for you? Smash it. Especially now that they've got two barrels of fish oil to, uh... Do some work with? Yeah, to keep themselves warm and to have light. Tia, the goat I had initially put on the group loop, but I've deleted it. Thank you. All right. As I'm looking up encumbrance as a reference, I can push drag lift up to 750. Yeah. But then you've got all your gear and stuff too that we don't usually weigh out, which is why I was saying the 500 yeah. pushes, pushes you pretty much to your limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Awesome. So you get set up, you gather up provisions because you got no I real idea how far you're going into the wilderness. And uh, start heading south. How much do rations cost? I think it's an obscenely high two gold a day or something like that. That's if you want really good stuff. Oh, okay. Well, we don't want to eat. Well, we are mighty adventurers, though. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grab an extra ten, 10 rations. Five silver per day.
So 10 extra rations is uh, five gold. Perfect. Done. So Spencer was very close to right for feeding the entire group for a day. So I'm suited up for 10. Is, it, is that enough? I grabbed 20 just in case. Because we have a tendency to come across people that we drag home and whatnot. And they also need rations or animals and things like that. So. All right. Okay, I'll buy some extra then too. Okay, so we heading south, or yeah. all right. So you guys lead on. Get your your rations. Start heading south. There are no roads, um, but your trip southward is made easier by the fact that any um, like river or or body of water that you encounter is frozen completely over. Um, and it's oh, my trip. My trip south is perfectly fine. I don't know what everybody else's problem is. <laughs> oh, because you're wearing those new boots. <laughs> I got them. I got them boots. I'm not worried because I got the ring of cold resist, so I'm good. Yep. All right. Um, <laughs> Dripper leads you onwards. Um, a day, a second day, a third day, and on the fourth day, when you guys are getting to the point where you're like, does he even know where he's going? But he's traveled fairly unerrantly. Like, you guys aren't wandering around lost. Um, on the fourth day, you guys come to a valley. And you can see down in the valley what looks like um, this just strange mound of, of material that looks really out of place in this, in this valley. Um, and you detect some, some light illumination coming from it. Um, roll me a perception check from the distance that you're at now. Everybody or just him? Anybody who wants to. Four. You don't get a lot of information. Heels. It, it looks like someone dropped, dropped a giant octopus into the valley. Well, you know, this is a place of pretty strange things. There's a valley. Like a, there's, there's an octopus in this valley. We should go and uh, have some like calamari for dinner. Like a kraken? Maybe. No, like an octopus. Big. Maybe a kraken. Huge, huge, like... And it's got it's got like a it's shell. Frozen. Yep. Like a mollusk. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go and uh, have some calamari for dinner. So as you guys approach, I'll show you what it looks like. And I'll read you some flavor text. And I'll switch the stream so that it's on the right page too. You can see weirdly because the where that black is is an area you're not supposed to go, and they didn't grid it. Now, bear with me for two seconds. Okay, hold up is done, and we're on. To make sure my uh, hit points are refreshed. Mm -hmm. Yes, you guys have all had long rests. Um, okay. I'll be right back. I have to go reach something for Vaughn. All right. Correct.
All right. Let me know when. Actually, I can see when Steve comes back and we'll get started again. So uh, as we travel, wherever we spend our little downtime, uh, l looking for pebbles to collect for ammo. And if I can't find anything like that, uh, harder fragments of ice that I'd smooth out, keep in a small pouch attached to the outside of my backpack that uh, would help keep them fresh. So they don't melt. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. That's beautiful. And over, over using the, the, the environment past, against them. Yeah. Over the past course of the past four days, you haven't had any trouble finding those. All right. Um, oh, I need this back. Dang, I love that Star Destroyer bridge that he has. I'm pretty sure you can find uh, a number of websites that offer up uh, virtual backgrounds. I've, I've seen that one or one a lot like it uh, a number of times. In fact, there's a guy at work who took a, a picture from his uh, workspace on his desk so that every time you see him on a, in a virtual meeting, it looks like he's in the office. Hmm. That's pretty cool. What's that? Someone said on their desk. Oh, I was, I was saying uh, Garnet. Garnet's wall wallpaper for Teams. He, he uses a picture taken from his desk in the office. <laughs> he just joined the meeting? Put that up and just walk away. <laughs> no, 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 he's he's there. You can see the little halo around him. Yeah, that would be good if it's if you figure out how to animate the selfie. <clears throat> Make it blink every once in a while. All right. <clears throat> As you get closer, you don't speak deep speech, do you, Dripper? Yeah. Okay. So as you get closer, you start hearing what is obviously some type of repeating phrase in a language you don't understand. Um, as you uh, trudge deeper into the valley, an eerie glow betrays the monstrous outline of something stupendous and ominous. It looks like a cephalopod with slimy, ropey tentacles as thick as tree trunks that has tried and failed to bury its immense bulk in the snow and as you guys are approaching this and you can see the outside of it looks vaguely like a seashell and also vaguely metallic um, you hear scratching sounds in the snow as um, the apparently there are some creatures outside this that are headed your direction and I will take initiative rolls please Oh, I got a 23. It didn't. Uh... Oh, there's a reason. Uh, you guys are in the bottom. Bottom southeast corner of the map. Oh, there we are. There we are. Okay. Another one on an it. Jeez. Do, do, do. All right. Who did I miss? One, two, three, four. Uh, we need an ochreist in there. There we go, and I need to pull up the carrion crawler sheet. Pop that out and over here. And Okay, Dripper, what'd you get for? 23. 23 and Ochrist? 20. All right, so you see mounds of snow sort of um, coming from either side of the um, strange apparition in front of you. Dripper, what would you like to do? 
Uh, how far away is that from us? Uh, I'm going to shoot at it with my sharp bow. Okay. Oh. There's any damage. Uh, what's the range on your short bow? 8320. Oh, and it's 75 way. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that's going to hit. Deals eight points of damage. Uh, anything else? Um, no, I'm going to... I hate going first in a situation like this. So I'm just going to wait okay. to see what everybody else does. Oh, Chris. My, my, stuff's all, my stuff's all positional, right, for me to do my damage, so i got to wait for everyone else. That's why I try to have tactical maps for almost every encounter, because... Puts you at a disadvantage otherwise. This guy's about to feel the boom. Okay. Slightly less boom and a little more. <laughs> you throw a giant rock and it hits the snow where this thing is tunneling through. Um, you have a feeling the snow absorbed some of the damage, which is why it did so little. Okay, Niels. I wiggle my finger. Man, she hit it with all she got. Mm -hmm. All right, two points of damage. Tia. Okay. Um. So far, everyone's just staying put, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm going to step out a little bit in front of everyone and hold an attack for when someone gets within ten of me. All right. The creatures are going to come scurrying towards you. What's happening? Why is it being weird? What's going on? I'm seeing the retreat. That's not what I'm trying to do at all. Bear with me. I'm going to refresh my roll 20. That's better. All right. 10, 15, 20, 30. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. All right. Well, it's within range, so I'm going to hit it. Okay. Which one? Well, you move the other one first. Okay. You swing out with your prepared attack as it springs out of the snow and you weren't expecting the it to be the shape that it is and your attack hits snow. Sill, your turn. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, load my sling and approach. Oh wait, they are much closer than I thought. Yep. Scratch that. They came We're going to step advantage. over here. Yeah, for advantage. Where's my... Swinging for 17. Oh. Shoot. I should have stepped one further and I forgot to. Uh, 
Uh, 17 will hit. I'm just lost my uh, pop out when I did my refresh. And I need my this pop out. Come in here. Okay. Yep, 17 hits for 15 points of damage. You deliver a really crushing blow to the side of this thing. It's got like a, a chitinous carapace, and you see that you've you've dented in the side, and it sort of spins towards you a little bit. Uh, Dripper, your turn. Okay, I hold on a sec here. Uh, how big are they? Like, like I know that they're four squares, but are they like they like big bugs? Can I? They're big. They're big, sort of weird centipede-looking things. Um, so I think the best that I can do is here on this, but I could get Dave the Owl to come in and do a distraction or a help action on this carrying crawler and I will hit it attack it with my dagger Duh. I hate it when it does that instead of putting in the picture anyway there's a link to a carrying crawler picture if you want to see in D&D &D. Okay, so 13 points of damage. You manage to find a weak spot in the carapace, jag your, uh, jab your dagger through and shake it back and forth. You do some damage. Thanks, Spencer. I want this back so I can see you guys. There we go. Um, that's your turn, Ocarist. Yeah, I'm going to shoot two rays at the top and one at the bottom. Okay, all of them are going to hit. You deal 14 points of damage to the top guy. And three to the bottom one. The top guy is looking pretty beat up by now. Uh, heals. I'm going to just take a quick little sidestep back here. And then I'm going to fire. You said the top one was looking bad. So that's one I'm going to go at. Eldritch Blast. Holy snot. You deal 10 points of damage to it. It is on its last legs. Um, all right. Anything else? Who? All right, Tia, your turn. All right. I feel like I should recognize that background. Yes, you should. I'll be in my bunk. Ah, yes. Uh, I, I see. Kaylee's. Technically, that's Kaylee. Yeah, I see Kaylee's sign now. Okay, Serenity. I am. Uh, ooh. Oh, oh, um, <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna pop my arms out. Oh, nice. They make what? Dex saves. 
Yeah. Um, and I think Dripper has to, and uh, Ocarist as well. And I don't know about Dave. Oh, Dave probably flew away after his health. Yeah. Care. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dave. He's Dave, high enough. Do you, do Dave you, doesn't stick around. Do you choose, or is it everybody? With your arms. Oh, oh, oh good question. Each creature of your choice. Great, never mind. It's just those two. Uh, one saves and one doesn't. So roll me your damage. Okay. The almost dead guy is even more almost dead. Do they take half? Mm, which one? Is that? Nope, it's just a... Uh... Oh, either do or not. This guy's almost dead. Okay, well, I'm going to hit him then. Okay. All right. You, as it as it sort of rears up to strike towards Sill, you slash it along the side of the glaive along and the side. kill it. I don't think so. All right, that's my turn. Oh, yeah, because you used your bonus action already. Okay. Uh, Carrion Crawler is going to turn on Dripper and attack with disadvantage. With its tentacles. That's going to hit. It deals. Five points of poison damage. Can I get a con save please from Dripper? Dripper, you are be that first one for a minute. So all your attacks are at disadvantage. And then it is going to turn its second attack on you as well, uh, which is no longer disadvantaged because it managed to hit you. That's going to hit. And this, um, so it slashes at you with its tentacles and it pulls you in and then it bites you with its toothy maw, dealing eight points of piercing damage. And that is its turn. Sill. You're going to spin around as much as I can. And take a poke. All right. With advantage. All right. Smash. 15 points of damage. Was there any visible... Uh, Splash of the poison. Like, would I recognize the tripper was poisoned? Is he looking green around the feathers? You see him sort of hunched over and not, he's obviously not feeling well. So, I, as I'm swinging, I'll say, Tripper, come over here. Green around the feathers. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Uh, I was going to say gills, but you're a bird. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dripper, your turn. Okay, well, I'm going to stab it. Uh, and then I'm going to move. Uh, so if I have advantage, it's just a normal attack then. Yeah. Because I'm at disadvantage. Yeah, uh, which would mean that you do get your sneak. Yes. Yep. All right. Nice. Des describe how you kill this thing. Uh, well, it's, it's a centipede. I cut out, I'm cutting off as many legs as I can. So eventually it just falls to the ground and yeah. Really flying yeah. off like you're I'm, like a top chef as you fillet and then, thing. and then I tell my friends, I'm like, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. <laughs> don't worry about him. All right. Uh, all right, that's 200. Oh, no, sorry. That's 180 experience for that. Now we're coming up on 6 o'clock. There's 8 for you, Dripper. Um, the rest of this has the potential to be more complex, so I think we're going to end here. Okay, okay, but my arms are still up for the next 
10 minutes. Okay, write that down. I don't want to. All right. And if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for hanging out. Bye. How much XP was that? Sorry. 180. 180. See you. 180.